Hello again, fellow Beach Bum traders. Welcome to part one of our weekly trading game plan for the week of February 14th through February 18th, 2022. And this week we want to talk about the fact that we love trading. And we want to encourage you in honor of Valentine's Day on Monday, February 14th to also share with us and your fellow Beach Bum traders, why do you love trading? What do you love about trading? Let's think about it. Let's talk about it. And then let's share our thoughts about what do we love about trading again in honor of Valentine's Day on Monday, February 14th. Please share your reasons why you love trading, what you love about trading uh, in the comments below and or in our Facebook group, the Beach Pump Trading Facebook group. Uh, you'll find the link to our Facebook group as well as our other social media sites included in the description box below. So let's get started with our weekly trading game plan for this week, uh, February 14th through February 18th, 2022. Okay, first off this week, I'd like to start our weekly trading game plan with reviewing the economic data from last week, the impact that had on the market, and then what economic data we expect coming into next week. So I'm on the economic calendar in investing.com, and you can easily get to this via news, economic calendar. We can see the economic data for the current week, which uh, is... This week, as this is Saturday, and we can quickly scroll through and look for, you know, highlights as to what uh, missed or beat the forecast, the expectations for this week. So if we quickly go through some of these uh, data points, we can see consumer credit uh, was uh, below expectations on Monday. We see trade balance was, uh, again, below expectations on uh, Tuesday. We see the crude oil stock again. Uh, there was a drawdown in crude oil stock. Inventories also a drawdown on crude oil inventories, and we you saw during the week that uh, the oil prices went up. Um, they spiked, I think, over 94 already. So again, uh, gasoline, distillates, gasoline inventories declined. And then Thursday was the, the big data. We got the CPI data, we got jobless claims data, and you saw the negative impact that that had on uh, the um, market as a whole. All the indices declined when that CPI data came out. It was quite dramatic right as that data dropped. All the markets declined, major sell-off, risk-off because it indicates, you know, very hot inflation. Uh, we could see the continuing jobless claims was a little higher than, than expected. And we see all the CPI data was, core CPI was higher than expected. Uh, January CPI was higher than expected and again this all that we've been saying for a long time you know inflation is not transitory inflation is hot 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 and uh, this just confirmed that it's not transitory we're going into January now uh, inflation is still still with us still very hot and that uh, caused a major shock to the market um, assuming that the markets is now assuming that the Fed's going to have to uh, hike rates, hike interest rates uh, much faster, much more uh, than expected previously. And now there's a lot of talk about a 50 basis point, uh, 0.5 increase uh, in March. And there's talk about more rate hikes. We'll talk about that again more in a second. Um, and again, initial jobless claims was a little lower than expected, uh, that which is a positive. Uh, so the job markets, uh, you know, not too bad. The uh, continuing is a little high, but the initial is a little, a little bit lower than expected. Uh, but inflation is very hot. So again, all of these are indicators that it's going to push the Fed uh, to acting more aggressively, more hawkishly, more rapidly. 
uh, than previously expected. And again, that had a major impact on the markets, as we saw. Uh, then we see Friday, this uh, initial s Michigan sentiment data. Sentiment is poor, it's low. Uh, current condition is not good. So so the consumer's not, not very happy either. And that, that may be uh, because of the inflation. So again, inflation is the hot topic. Uh, again, we've been saying inflation is hot, hot, hot. And inflation is the hot topic right now. Uh, so again, just to review some of the headlines, some of the comments that were made about that is uh, this inflation was uh, a 40 year high. This is the hottest inflation we've had in 40 years going back to, I think they said, yep, 1982. So I, I remember 1982. I don't know if you do. Um, this was the Reagan years. So uh, you can remember what inflation was like, what what interest rates, mortgages, etc. were like in 1982 and people are expecting, you know, we're going back to that or they're even talking, you know, the 70s, inflation of the 70s. So uh, there's a lot of concern over this and again it, it says, you know, uh, more than expected, 7.5, biggest increase since 82 uh, and all the stock futures fell pretty immediately uh, and, and bond yields uh, so if we quickly look at what's coming up uh, next week on the economic data, one thing I do want to point out uh, as of note is Friday, uh, February 18th is uh, op options expiration date, uh, what they call OPEX. So please be aware that Friday is an OPEX date, which typically causes a uh, tug of war around the strike prices, particularly for very popular s stocks that have a a high open interest of options on them. You'll see tug of wars around those strike prices uh, where the seller wants it to pull it below the strike price so it expires worthless. The buyer wants to pull it above the strike price uh, for calls uh, and vice versa for puts so that they get can exercise and, and benefit from their options. So uh, we've had a lot of volatility. The VIX is currently sitting at 27.36. Uh, this may cause more volatility and again, we'll talk about some of the other events of the week that uh, triggered more volatility. So we may have high volatility uh, going into the end of the week. So I hope that all helps. Um, let's quickly, while we're here, just look at the earnings calendar for next week. See what else we've got. We, okay, so we've got uh, some treasury auctions. And that has had more of an impact nowadays because it's been pushing the prices around the treasury yields around and that has had a an impact on riskier growth stocks you get a risk off when the when the yields start to really uh pop so tuesday we get pr uh, producer uh inflation data so this may tell us again more inflation you know is is it entering at the beginning of the supply chain is it still entering at the beginning of the supply chain or not Again, this may trigger a pressure on the markets if it just uh, reaffirms that inflation is not transitory, inflation is hot. Uh, get mortgage rates, retail data, so this will give us a consumer uh, measure. How's the consumer? Are they decreasing their sales? How's the economy doing? Typical crude oil, uh, that may impact uh, oil, gas prices on Wednesday. Uh, then we get building and then typical jobless claims data on Thursday. Uh, we've got some Fed officials talking that again may, what, uh, we had some comments by Bullard last week that, you know, he was very hawkish and that triggered some decline in the um, markets. So we've got a couple Fed officials talking. So if, if they come out hawkish as well, that may impact the market so uh, listen for what what are they saying on Thursday uh, the Friday typical homeless sales another Fed speaker and then commodities and, and Baker Hughes oil rigs uh, we'll see or I, I have seen that the oil rig count continues to increase US oil produ production is continuing to increase and again that's currently not being reflected in uh, oil and gas prices that are running 93, 94, and you know they still talk 100, 120 uh, for a peak in oil. So, 
I hope that helps. Again, you can uh, view the calendar in investing.com for this week, next week, and on a daily basis. So I hope that all helps. Uh, you can access this as well in the tools menu on our Beach Bum Trading homepage, uh, where you can find the link to our homepage included in the description box below. Okay, I believe that you saw a confirmation in this week's market action in particular stocks and particular sectors. Uh, what we said in last week's weekly trading game plan that earnings matter again. We see companies that come out with positive earnings get rewarded. If they beat expectations, uh, give good guidance, come out with positive earnings, they get rewarded. And if they disappoint either in missing expectations or uh, giving poor guidance, uh, they get punished severely. Uh, these, these moves have been very dramatic and again, earnings matter again. Uh, if you haven't seen our discussion of why earnings matter again, how you can play, how you can profit from this fact, uh, please see our part one of our weekly trading game plan from last week. I'll put a link also to that in the description box below. Uh, this continues to be an important theme uh, because, again, earnings matter again. So let's look at the earnings calendar for the upcoming week just very briefly. Um, I'm, we won't go in detail, but again, you can easily access this uh, from the calendars page in investing.com. Uh, you can see we were on the economic calendar. You can uh, click on the link to the earnings calendar, or again, you can go no news and uh, earnings calendar. Or maybe it's it's maybe it's tools. Again, it, you can find this in in the crap. Okay, so again, we can see we have a lot of earnings this week. Uh, you can again scroll down through, look at the stocks that are reporting. If there's any of your stocks that are reporting earnings uh, this week, uh, I would definitely want to be aware of that. Also, is a stock. Uh, in a sector that you have stock uh, are they reporting because again that's going to have a, a, an impact we see that again because earnings matter uh, if a related stock uh, is positive uh, reaction or negative it may impact your stocks as well similarly if it's a stock you're looking to watch uh, you want to know what their earnings report is and watch the reaction and, and uh, react accordingly yourself um, oh, and again, sympathy plays, you know, if some uh, stock in a sector that uh, you're watching uh, reports earnings, how does the market react to it? And you may be able to react with the stock you're looking to buy uh, quickly based on that reaction. Uh, sometimes this creates great opportunities. So again, it's important to be aware of who's reporting when. And you can again see we have a lot of earnings. So you can scroll down through that, do a find uh, for some of your stocks, etc. in investing.com. Another probably quicker way to see the more immediate uh, earnings reports is to go to the calendar, earnings calendar in the market uh, tab of Weeble. This is the online browser version of Weeble. Again, you can get two or more free stocks with your copy of Weeble using our affiliate link in the description box below. And again, if you go to the Markets tab, Calendar Earnings, we can see an abbreviated list of who's reporting. Uh, and if it's an after-market close, AMC, before market open, BMO, what the expectation is. And again, this will give you a more near-term uh, list of who's reporting earnings when and then uh, that will update accordingly. So I hope that all helps. Again, very important to know who's reporting earnings uh, when, particularly the stocks that you own, stocks that you're watching. Uh, so please be aware of that and act, act accordingly. And again, uh, I'd recommend you review our strategy um, and ways that you can make money off of the earnings reactions uh, discussed in last week's weekly trading game plan. So I hope that all helps. Okay, let's look at how the markets ended up on Friday, the 11th of February. I'm on the home page of Finviz. You can find our affiliate link to Finviz in the description box below. And the dramatic change we can see occurred right when, uh, in my opinion, when the bots picked up the words uh, 
Russian invasion in the news releases and the press conference that came out, uh, we saw a dramatic sell-off in uh, it was very interesting, the trigger uh, that happened. Uh, again, I think it's spots triggering on the word Russian invasion. And they immediately bought oil, bought natural gas, bought commodities, and sold pretty much everything else. It was total risk-off, Russian invasion, risk-off, panic, boom. And the markets just, you know, dropped off immediately. Then they started to, rea you know... Uh, Settled down a little bit. We saw the VIX spiked up, but I think it may have made a high in the 30s. Uh, we'll look in the futures in a minute. Uh, but again, it was just a very uh, interesting trigger uh, that caused, you know, they said Russian invasion. And they say, OK, it's not a real invasion. We just think it's it's coming soon. But the market reaction was immediate, dramatic and negative. Um, and then it started to digest and, and settle down a little bit. So we saw that. So we saw, you know, major red. Everything went red tech, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the defensive stocks started to, to run. So uh, a lesson learned in this, and we'll talk about this in strategy as well as uh, have lists that are event-based and say, okay, in the uh, situation that a Russian invasion occurs, what do you expect to happen? And we saw what happens is, you know, the they interpreted oil up, natural gas up uh, because of a decrease in supply, defense stocks up, risk off, you know. Um, think about some of the other events that are, are coming up. Uh, we'll talk about oil again in a minute. Uh, there's some other events related to this that may be trigger events. But I, I again, I would highly recommend that in terms of a strategy is think about upcoming potential events and what will the potential probable market reaction be to those events. Um, and so you can act quickly accordingly when that event comes out. So I hope that helps. Again, we can see, you know, it, it had a major impact on the market on Friday. So uh, everything is pretty much down. Everything's red. Uh, we'll see in the news, you know. Um, right there, there's the, the trigger event, you know, Russian invasion, uh, which it has not invaded yet. Um, another point I want to correct that some people are putting around is is Biden is not saying he's going to send any troops to actually fight the Russians in Ukraine. He has no intention of sending troops at all. All they're talking about doing is sending defensive troops to NATO countries. Um, so that that's pretty much off the table. Really, all they're talking about is sanctions. And they really haven't um, announced in detail exactly what those sanctions are going to be. And they have to be passed through Congress right now. So, again, until we know exactly what those sanctions are, it's a little bit difficult to react accordingly in that area. But, again, that's that's the big news right now. First, it was the CPI data uh, hit the markets. And then we had this panic on uh, Russian invasion, uh, just news. It, and again, it's not an actual invasion yet. So we saw crude oil just shot up uh, on that news and then continued to trail up because of the potential decrease in supply. Russia is one of the world's largest oil suppliers. Natural gas uh, triggered, went up, back, back up, bounced back up, uh, kind of hit that, just barely crossed that four resistance uh, and then stabilized. So uh, Again, we'll we'll talk about our how we're playing crude and, and natural gas, but those are great plays coming, going forward. And again, gold, silver, uh, positive. Again, you know that's a risk off anti-inflation, so it got a boost from anti-inflation. The CPI numbers, gold and silver commodities got a boost, and then you know store value. Uh, from the Russian invasion news got a boost, and then we saw all the indices pretty much dumped and the treasury yields uh, declined uh, severely based on that news. They were rising, uh, but they dumped based on that news. So now let's dissect and uh, look at some of the sectors, the groups, the futures, etc., and figure out uh, how can we profit play this going forward. So if we jump over to the groups tab in FinBiz, we can see a sector performance. Uh, 
over multiple time frames we can see friday energy was really the only positive performer pretty much everything all, uh, else dumped but we can see what was hit the uh, most severely was technology etc uh, consumer cyclicals uh, communication services so again something to remember when the actual you know russian invasion occurs is what what goes up what comes down energy goes up technology goes down consumer cyclical down communication down so again in preparing your strategy for when the actual invasion hits uh, remember that energy up technology down and and act accordingly there are sector spider etfs and we have other etfs that we watch uh, that you can play that whole sector if you want and so again uh, part of our strategy how you can make money on these types of events is when that actually occurs you could buy energy sell technology um, and that would you know probably be a profitable trade uh, for the week we had okay Russian invasion and inflation and the sectors that benefited from that are energy basic materials again basic materials store of value there are uh, particularly ones that are priced in dollars are an inflation hedge so gold silver oil etc any uh, basic material that's priced in dollars is going to float with uh, inflation float with devaluing of dollars so again uh, if you have an event that's an uh, inflation base, those are some areas to look at. Buy basic materials and energy, sell communication technology. So again, uh, then for the month, energy is the only the only outperformer for three months. You know, energy's been outperforming, and we see oil and natural gas prices, uh, particularly oil is up. Natural gas was up, went down, is going back up. So. Uh, we'll look at the futures now and uh, see what that tells us. Okay, I'm now on the futures tab of Finviz, and uh, I w wanted to very quickly also show you a cool feature of this futures tab in Finviz. If you're not already aware, you can see by default when I go there, it, it defaults to a daily view, a daily chart view, uh, but it also has uh, more fine grain and, and larger uh, zoomed out views and I found this very useful this week to be able to zoom in to a five minute view uh, again when I was watching the commodities uh, activity etc you know here we can see the the reactions uh, more clear in a five minute chart and then we can see the direction of the reactions that way and then zoom out a little bit to the hourly chart see how the hourly reaction is is going um, and then a broader view, daily, weekly, monthly, etc. Uh, you can also uh, click on any of these futures uh, graphs and show them in another tab, window, etc. Or just click over there. I, I'd prefer to launch it into another browser, uh, browser tab or window so I can see the detailed chart. And again, that gives you a, a larger view of each of these futures. Uh, so again, this is great. I use this... Uh, during the day to watch the futures um, you can scroll through very quickly as you as you've seen we use this a lot for our game plans but also for our real-time uh, intraday trading uh, so again we can see the indices you know they're all again we and I'll probably put the link to the uh, bear market um, tr game plan again because that has a lot of strategies how to play a declining when I'll call a bear market, you know, we're still in a declining market, in my opinion. We can see, you know, we make these these run-ups, these uh, corrections going on the upside, uh, but then we continue to trend down. And the news, the hot inflation, that's a continuing trend, and it's pushing it down. So, again, we, we saw that a uh, little bit of a pop, a, a retracement up, and now we're headed back down again. So... Um, we can see all the indices reacted that way. We can see the VIX, you know, it popped. It looks like it touched uh, either near or just above 30 based on that Russian invasion news. Um, it's still sitting at 27.36. Uh, so it's still elevated. We'll see if we get a further panic on Monday. Mondays tend to be volatile. Uh, we'd love to catch uh, 
that peak using SBXY because eventually it will retrace revert to mean. Uh, we also saw this major pop in oil on that Russian invasion news and uh, it peaked I think almost 94 may have peaked in the 94s looks like it's pushing up uh, in part two we'll talk about how we're playing oil um, we're using you know uh, we'll talk in detail about the commodity future price and its relationship to the price index uh, like USO and UNG for oil and natural gas and then how that relates to uh, some leverage ETFs like gush and drip and uh, uh, cold and boil uh, for natural gas so th that's where we're, we're going to be very focused on those commodities how to play them essentially when oil peaks and rolls over again uh, we're going to short oil with drip um, that that's our play if you want to try to ride the momentum with gush you can do so um, we see all the oils popped up on that news uh, we see natural gas uh, ran up declined looks like it's bottomed looks like it's turning up um, uh, on that news again and so again this is a, a major focus that we're we're playing uh, on these on these very nice cycles I, I love these commodities where they have you know I'll say quote predictable cycles um, and you where you can tur see the the bottoms and tops these are great swings great scalps and again natural gas is a, a very uh, focus a play we're making a lot of money in these areas this is a, a great play so oil and natural gas are going to be major focuses for us this this week and we recommend uh, for you and we'll show you in part two how how you can play those there's there's a number of ways we have a preferred way but there's a number of ways you can benefit from these these cycles and these uh, extremes in these commodities you can see gold really spiked up on that news again uh, inflation head store of value um, one of these days I'll talk more about why I, I still say gold and silver are better inflation hedges and stores of value than cryptocurrencies for the general population and uh, maybe I'll tell you that story uh, so again gold and silver great plays uh, right now they're you know they're headed up um, so if you're not already in uh, it may may not be the best uh, buying opportunity right now we see all the commodities have reacted similarly uh, we are trying to find other ways to play swings in both in uh, going both directions on a number of these commodities some I found some I haven't found yet uh, we see lumber uh, bounce way back up again and then we see the treasuries uh, they were a major the prices were a major decline which meant the yields were were popping um, again inflation the feds tapering um, so yields have been popping putting pressure on tech stocks growth stocks uh, risk stocks uh, but then it, it popped back up on that uh, risk off which again uh, one of the triggers for these bots the mutual funds etc and I won't go into that uh, again but they they say okay risk off sell stocks buy bonds that's that's their their algorithm uh, right or wrong they they they're not thinking they're just that's that's the algorithm is okay ri risk scary panic uh, sell stocks buy bonds so uh, and then we see the dollar uh, started to recover uh, against like the euro etc as it had been in decline. Uh, so that's what we see here for the futures um, okay I also just wanted to quickly look at a few things on the markets tab in Weeble again we have a previous video on uh, in more detail about how you can use the markets tab in Weeble I'll put the that in the description box below so you can see that in more detail I just want to look at a few things right now uh, for one we can see the histogram of uh, advancers versus decliners I, I like this uh, versus just the numbers in Finbiz we could see more decliners than advancers but we can also see the distribution so the the bulk is a very small decline but then we have a, a longer tail uh, also I like to be able to see this net inflow 
uh, we could see there was a much larger outflow of money from the NASDAQ, tech stocks, etc. got hit much harder than the NYSC, uh, which is kind of expected given the risk off, uh, bond yields going up, etc. So I find that helpful. Um, also, I just want to look at the best performing. Let's see what was performing given the negative sentiment in the markets on Friday. So we're just looking very quickly for, you know, greens. Okay, so industrial, uh, we've got a, uh, there's probably an ETF, GIC was positive, oil and gas, we know energy was positive. Okay, coal, I know uh, Money Mitch, Story Investor Mitch on Benzica has been uh, loving BTU. He's been calling out BTU. So Mitch, if you're seeing this, uh, congratulations on that. Again, I know that's one that he likes. Uh, if you're not following, uh, don't watch Money Mitch. I, I recommend it, so I, I like the show. And you'll find us there on, on occasion. So, And metals and mining was, was okay, did okay. So that's, it's green. So now let's see what else we can find that performed well. So we would expect down, you know, downward, down, S Dow, S, everything down, downward pressure, up on the VIX, down on the Russell, et cetera, yeah, as expected. So again, you know, downward pressure on the indices, that's what you could expect. So that's, uh, and again, in the bear market video, we talk about, you know, those ETFs we just saw and how you can play those to the downside on all the indices. So uh, let's look at industries. Okay, we know energy already. Everything else is red there. Energy, consumer defensives is green. Okay, so we, we want to now see if there's some opportunity there. Everything else is red. Again, this is a nice tab here because as you can see, you can just very quickly see, okay, what's, what's performing, what's up, what's down. Uh, here we see, you know, aluminum I heard hit a high again. Uh, precious metals, okay, gold, precious metals, etc. Aluminum, so... Uh, Precious metals, okay, kind of pretty pretty much expected. Let's see about uh, bonds, okay. So 25 year durate long extended duration, long duration, okay. So all the long durations are positive. TLT, long durations are positive. Shorts are probably uh, not as positive or or potentially negative. So again. I find this very quick and easy to see, you know, what's what's outperforming, what's underperforming. There's the markets tab on Webull. Again, you can get uh, your copy of Webull, get two or more free stocks with our affiliate link included in the description box below. And you can see our video on more detail about how, how to use the markets tab. So I hope that helps. Okay, given all this uh, market analysis data, uh, etc., uh, what are some trends we see, st additional strategies we can employ in picking our stocks going into next week, the 14th through the 18th of February, and then uh, longer term? So one of the hypotheses I wanted to throw out and get your feedback on is uh, the fact that Disney, Lyft, Uber, travel stocks like Expedia, etc., uh, beat earnings expectations uh, in the, the fourth quarter. In my humble opinion, that's IMHO means in my humble opinion, implies that the reopening is happening even faster than the analysts expected. And uh, again, they're all outperforming. Disney got uh, outperformed both. On, well, we won't talk about Disney Plus in terms of reopening because that's a, more of a stay at home. So, But the theme parks did very well. Um, so that was interesting in Uber and Lyft. So ride sharing did very well. Uh, if it were just Uber, they have a delivery service. Uh, that Again, that would be more of a lockdown, but Lyft is pretty much a pure uh, ride sharing. And then Expedia, travel, travel stocks uh, did very well. So, you know, is the reopening happening faster than they expected? And is there opportunities in that area? What do you all think? You know, uh, put, tell us what you think in the comments below in our Facebook group, Beach Bum Trading Facebook group. Uh, we want to know what do you think? Is the reopening happening faster than expected? And, and can we benefit from that? Um, also, I wanted to point out that the next FOMC meeting is March 15th. So when the CPI data and the, all the discussions of rate hikes, uh, 
uh, came out. Um, there was, you know, a lot of discussion about what's going to happen at the March 15th uh, FOMC meeting. Are they going to hike by uh, half a per, you know half a percent point five versus just point two five? And Bullard came out and he was uh, pushing that point uh, five uh, hike in March. Also, some inter intra meeting. Um, rate hikes and then some other Fed officials came out and kind of disputed that a bit so there, there's some uh, debate in that area um, it, but it was pointed out that you know the, the February CPI data is probably going to be critical for the actual events going into that March FOMC you know we expect a rate hike everyone expects one now the question is, is it going to be 0.25 or 0.5 um, and how's the market going to react? Is if if it's surprised by the 0.5, although the probability of that is increasing, so people are starting to expect it. As you can see, Jim Cramer says uh, traders are now signing an 87% probability of a half percent hike in March. Okay, so the market is now expecting that. Uh, so we could get if we only got a 0.25 in March, that could be a positive reaction from the market. Uh, because now they're expecting a 0.5. So, uh, again, something to plan for um, going forward. It's, it's, again, the March, we want to watch the February CPI data going into the March 15th FOMC meeting. Now let's talk about some other potential near-term events and for, for which we want to prepare and how to prepare for them. Okay, as we discussed earlier, we want to think about and make lists of things that we want to trade based on uh, near-term events. So how do we prepare for some of these events and you know what kinds of things do we want to buy or sell if these events occur. So again if we have those lists prepared in advance then we know when we hear that event has occurred if we can react quickly uh, we can really profit from from that event. So let's talk about a couple uh, options for the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So we've got, you know, two potential outcomes. Um, number one is, okay, Russia actually invades. So what what do we expect the market reaction to be uh, from that? Well, we saw a precursor when the news just came out and the bots caught the Russian invasion. Well, we saw oil, natural gas triggered up, gold up, silver up, commodities up, everything else risk off, so indices down, uh, bonds up because of the bot reaction, you know, sell stocks by bonds, uh, so bond prices up, yields down. So again, we, we got a precursor for, okay, what do we expect when that event occurs? Now, if the market settles down again for a couple days before this event actually occurs, uh, that may pose an opportunity again. You know, oil up, nat gas up, gold, silver up, uh, indices down, short the indices, you know, etc. So that's uh, one list, one uh, possible outcome. Another possible outcome is, let's say they cut a deal and they talk to Putin and they walk him off the the ledge and they get him not you know to agree not to invade at least for now um, how's the market going to react to that well you would expect kind of the opposite right now oil supply is not at risk nat gas might not be at risk so those prices may decline uh, maybe the pressure on the commodities declines. Maybe the indices uh, rejoice in exuberance and go up. So, so again, you know, both ends of this event, you know, be ready uh, when you hear one or the other has occurred. Be able to react, be nimble, and profit from uh, being prepared for the event. Now, another potential event, which may or may not be related to a uh, Russian invasion is, okay, the U.S. is talking to Iran again. They're talking about their nuclear sanctions, uh, but in, in my opinion, uh, what's behind that is high oil prices are uh, uh, spurring uh, the desire to have more oil supply so that they can low, lower uh, overall oil prices. So... Uh, if you listen for this, them cutting a deal allowing Iran to sell oil again in the global market, which would increase oil supply, uh, that would be a downward pressure on, on oil prices. So again, I think these uh, are linked. I think if Russia invades first, you're going to see oil prices spike. 
and then I think you're going to see more pressure on the U.S. and U.N. to lift sanctions on Iran uh, to increase oil supply to bring oil prices down. Oil prices, fuel prices are very inflationary. Uh, Biden, you know, the inflation's already hot. Uh, people, you know, have to, and if they're going to go to work, they have to buy gas for their car. And if that gets too expensive, uh, they're, they're going to be very unhappy. And we're seeing that already in some of the sentiment data, etc. People are unhappy with the inflation. It's eating into their, their earnings. Uh, fixed income, again, is very, uh, inflation really hurts people on fixed income because all their basic necessities cost more. Uh, so people are going to be very unhappy if inflation continues to be high and we're going into midterm elections. So um, again, listen for this event and uh, obviously this impacts oil supply. Um, there are probably some other things that you can think of. Please put in the comments below and in our Facebook group, what else do you think would be a way to play the U.S. U.N. lifting sanctions on Iraq or on Iran, I mean. Um, and please also put in the comments in our Facebook group, what other potential near-term events do you think we should be preparing for right now? You know, and what are, are the up and down, buy, sell plays that you think are... Um, good for the potential outcomes on those near-term events. We'll continue to talk about those. We'll add uh, other ideas as we go forward, but uh, please share with us your thoughts in these areas. So we hope you enjoyed part one of our weekly trading game plan for February 14th, Valentine's Day through February 18th this week. Um, and again, in honor of Valentine's Day, please share with us, you know, what do you love? Why do you love trading? What do you love about trading? Please share the comments in our Beach Pump Trading Facebook group. You know, we love trading. I love doing this kind of analysis, thinking about it, thinking about the strategy, strategizing, and making money off of that thought process. I, I mean, this is great. Uh, I, I hope you enjoy it too. Uh, if there's any ways that we can help you be more successful in your trading career, uh, please let us know in the comments below, again, our Facebook group, our other social media sites, um, etc. And I hope you, that you'll choose to join us tomorrow for part two of our weekly trading game plan, uh, where we will talk about updates to our various watch lists. Uh, we'll talk about various individual stocks, ETFs, etc. to be able to play, uh, make money based on this market analysis and these events that we've talked about in part one. So again, we hope this all helps. We hope you like this. Please smash the like button to uh, help YouTube, the YouTube algorithm, share this with more of your fellow Beach Bum traders around the world. If you're not already a member of our Beach Bum trading community, we hope you will choose to join us and participate. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. Please share this on your social media sites. And please click the bell icon so that you are notified uh, as we produce and release additional uh, videos like this. Uh, please let us know in the comments below, you know, what do you think of this video? And again, uh, we, we want to hear why you love trading. What do you love about trading? And we wish you good luck and have a great trading week. The content of this video was produced by Beach Bum Trading. We hope you will choose to also join us in the Beach Bum Trading community and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Visit us at our homepage at beachbumtrading.com, the bum without the U. Similarly on Twitter, Beach Bum Trading, bum without the U. On Facebook and in our Beach Bum Trading Facebook group. Please follow us on Pinterest and on Instagram. All of the links to our social media sites will be included in the description box below. And we hope you will choose to subscribe to our Beach Bum Trading YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Thank you. We hope that you like our weekly game plan for the trading week for this week. Thank you for watching the video to the end. If you found this helpful, we hope that you will choose to subscribe to our Beach Plum Trading YouTube channel. And please click the bell icon below.
to automatically be notified whenever we publish a new video. Please also share this with your fellow traders and friends via the share button included below. And let us know if you found our weekly game plans helpful in the comments uh, included below. And uh, let us know how we can improve. What would you like to see more, less of, etc. Thank you again for watching. Uh, good luck and have a great trading week.